What's going on YouTube? It's Vinny from Vape Academy again, and we have a uh, special treat for you. We're going to do a bit of battery safety. We're going to cover everything from your newbie vapors into your experienced mod handlers, so to speak. You know, you guys who have been doing it for, for a while, do a little brush up course for you guys. Battery safety is very, very important, all right? Mods are inherently dangerous. You're basically shorting a battery in order to make these things vape. You got to keep that in mind. Um, we're going to go through battery inspection, you know, how to look for wear, signs of wear and tear. We're going to go through a regular vape ca uh, calculator, go through Ohm's Law and all that stuff, you know, how to, uh, how to figure out ratings and stuff like that. Yeah. We're also going to go through warning signs and uh, oh shit moments, you know, how do you handle it when your mod is breaking down in front of you, so to speak, you know. When your batteries are going into thermal runaway and um, yeah, we're going to cover a few things. We're going to dive in close. Like I said, I'm going to show you the vape calculator. I'm going to show you a couple things about batteries to look for and uh, what you want to avoid if you do have a battery that's kind of old and messing up a little bit. So yeah, we'll dive in close and we'll show you some things. All right, guys, here we go. We got a few batteries here for you. Uh, the little guys, the 18350s. Um, all right, when they talk about amps, here's your amps right here, 10 and a half. And your, uh, your milliamp hours, that's basically how much battery life you're going to get out of it. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it goes from 700 milliamp hours and 10 and a half amps. You got 1,000 milliamp hours to 15 amps. The IMRs, the Samsungs, I think these are 20 amps. I'd have to double check that. I'll put a link up in there. And the, uh, the EFES, they range from 35 amps. And then they also have a 30 amp. And the, uh, the milliamp hours goes down with the 30 amp. 2500 to the 35 and 2100 for the uh, 30. All right, so we got a few batteries here. We're going to uh, do a, a little pre vape inspection. Now, what I like to do basically, take your mod, check out your wrapping. These are basically surface scratches, they're not a big deal. Anything that's deep or kind of gouged out, you might want to look at, but run your finger over it. If you can't feel any of them, you can just see them. I wouldn't stress that too much. Now, you want to look over the wrapper, you know, anything that kind of seems out of place with the wrapper. If you got a big part where it's kind of pulling out, that's where you want to look. You know, this one's actually pretty good. But the idea is you don't want your positive connection touching any metal on the side out here because that's what's going to cause a hard short. And that can put your battery into what they call thermal runaway. And that's basically when mods start melting down and that's when you lose hands, you lose legs, you lose feet. You know, the, the shit that you read in the newspaper, that's what causes that a lot of times. Or you know, your uh, your fire button gets stuck, and the thing just continues to, to burn and burn and burn and burn and burn. And then this battery is way over its limits, and that's when it puts it into thermal runaway. Now, this Samsung here, you'll see a little, little chip in the wrapper on the side. Now, me, I would retire this battery. I mean, that's, that's always your call. That's never a good thing that you have any metal exposed on the outside. Really, the, the main problem areas are up top, where metal might touch your positive connection and the metal outside. When I go through the wrappers, again, these aren't bad. I think I've used this little guy like maybe five times, so yeah, that's right on point. But yeah, basically, look at your battery every time you take it off the charger, every time you take it out of the mod. Make sure nothing's wrong with it, and then you can continue to go. Most of these batteries have a cycle. I like to go about three months before I get a new battery and put it in there. But yeah, again, that's my call. It comes down to what you feel comfortable with. As long as you've done the research and know what you're doing, like I said, whatever you want to do is your call. All right, guys, so here we have your basic calculator. Up here, you choose your wire type. This is just called Vapor's Toolbox. You can find it in the App Store or in the uh, Google Play. Now you pick whether you got Canthal A1, Canthal A, Canthal D, Nichrome 60, Nichrome 80, or flat ribbon wire. Uh, right now for this video I'm just going to go Canthal A. And then you choose your coils. Single, dual, I usually run a dual coil. You pick your gauge. Most of my builds are usually a 26. That's what I got the most of, so that's what I have. And then you put down here your target resistance. Alright, so I'm, I like to be at like a 0.3 for a lot of my builds. You know, not too low, but not too high either. It tells you how you want to cut it. You know, I usually don't pay attention to that. This is the part that you want to check out. This tells you how many wraps you want to do. So it's a 3-2, but basically what that means is you have three wraps, one, two, three on the top, and two on the bottom. So as you're wrapping, you would count it as a three. 
And now for the purpose of this video, this is where it's really, really important. So you go up here, we want watts using voltage and resistance. You put your battery voltage in, you put your regular res resistance in here, and now check this out. You're at 58 watts and 14 amps. So with those numbers, the lowest we'd want to use is an 18500 rated of 15 amps. But ideally, you'd want to be using one of these Samsungs, or an E-Fest, where it's 30 amps, or a 35 amp. You know, you want to be up above that number to be safe. That's the issue with battery safety is a lot of people run these super low ohm builds, 0.15, check this out. When we go to 0.15, you're now at 28 amps. Now you're pushing the limits of the Samsung battery. You're even getting close to the limits of the EFS 30 amp, which, you know, a lot of people say that those aren't really 30 amp, but I'm not getting into the politics of that in this video. I'm just going through where you're at. Now, when we go even lower than that, you know, some of these cloud chasers are down at 0.08. Let's go there. Now you're at 52 amps. Now you're way over most of the, the, the current ratings and the pulse ratings for a lot of these batteries. Now the pulse rating is basically, it'll handle that for up to a minute, they say. You know, so it'll handle 35 amps for up to a minute. And now some of these batteries, there's a few charts that I'll put down, links in the description. There's a few charts that say that some of these batteries can get up to 100 amps as long as they're under, you know, 10, 20 seconds, stuff like that. I, for one, don't want to go there, and I don't think anybody who isn't experienced with coil building and wrapping coils should be going there, but hey, you're going to do what you want to do. That's not my call. That's yours. We're talking about safety. You know, when you're up at 50 amps, that's not really smart. You know, that's when your buttons get hot. That's when you want to get rid of the mod. You know, that's that's danger zone for me. Now, basically, we're going to go through a couple oh shit moments, and uh, basically what that is is... When your button's getting way too hot, you, you know, you kind of have an idea that maybe I built too low and I, I don't like where this is headed. You know, everything starts to get a hot, too hot to handle. You don't want to hold it. Um, for starters, try and get the battery out if you can, all right? Unscrew it as quickly as you can. When batteries are starting to go into thermal runway, they expand. You know, some of these mods don't have battery vents. Now, this guy does. This is a Tree of Life mod. Um... This guy does in the bottom, but you know the issue with most of these is when a lot of these batteries go into thermal runaway, they vent from the top, and not many mods have battery vents in the top. So really, it's not doing too much. It's going to let some of the gas out the bottom, but as soon as this thing expands in that tube, which you don't have a lot of clearance in there, as soon as it expands in the tube, gas isn't going to escape from the bottom anymore. It's going to be stuck in the top and then it's going to continue to expand and expand and expand and that's when these things can be called pipe bombs and that's when it starts to get dangerous it's super foggy in here, I'm sorry guys um, yeah, so again when you start getting worried, alright, maybe it's maybe this is bad, maybe this is serious try and get your battery out take it out, leave it, you know, if the battery's hot and you're really worried about it, go put it on the back deck take it out back put it on, put it on a towel, leave it out back you know, go check it in 20 minutes. If you don't hear a boom, you're good. But I wouldn't use that battery too much after that, all right? So that's step one. If you can't get the battery out, you know, like I said, these things expand. If you take your cap off and it's, it's jammed in there and you can't get it out, take the whole mod out back, put it on a towel on the back porch, leave it there. You know, see what happens. Yeah, so put it somewhere where it's not really going to affect anything if it does go boom, you know, get, get, get it nice and far away from the house. Nine times out of ten, it's not really going to get that bad, but the idea is it can get that bad, you know, that's, that's what you want to really avoid. Now really, the, the brands that I've had experience with are all name brand batteries, alright? I go with either the Purple E-Fests, which you can see I have a bunch of. I've used the Samsungs, I've used Sony's, uh, the Panasonics aren't bad, I don't have my Sony's and Panasonic's, they're actually all on a charger right now, but the, um, all four of those companies are, are decent batteries, you know, a lot of people say that the E-Fests are just rebranded LG's or Samsung's, which in my opinion isn't really a bad battery. I find that the E-Fests hit harder than the Samsung's in most cases, so I don't really think that they're Samsung batteries. But, you know, that's, that's my opinion, and that's how I want to stay with it. But 
find a battery that works for you and stay with it, you know? If, if it works, it works. A lot of people like Sony's, a lot of people like the E-Fest, oh, excuse me. But worry about the amp rating more than anything, you know? Better safe than sorry. Go high with the amp ratings. The higher the better because then you can build lower coils. If you do want to get into this whole sub-ohm game, you got to do it safely. You got to be smart. Do your research. Figure out what you're going to buy. Figure out how you're going to build it. Get yourself a good multimeter. All right? Not just an ohms checker. Get a multimeter. All right? Could have both, but the multimeters are a bit more accurate. All right? There's a... Um, there's an issue with a lot of people that, like, you can't test a coil on a mechanical mod. Put it on something that's going to tell you how many ohms you're running, because if that thing's at a .02, you know, you're, you're really, really close to shorting the battery at that point. You know, a lot of people consider a hard short anything below .1 ohms, a lot of people in the electrical world. So, really, it shouldn't really be there, but, again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to tell you what to avoid. All right, that's really all I got, guys. Nice quick video on battery safety. All right, I hope you at least learned something. For the newer guys, I hope you learned a bunch of things. Be safe. Don't be stupid. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.